This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You ain't never going to be what you used to be. Did you hear what I said? You ain't never going to be what you used to be. Somebody said, I used to be broke. You'll never be broke. Another day in your life. Somebody said, I used to be sick all the time. You'll never be sick like that another day in your life. Somebody said, I used to be mean. You'll never be mean like that, not another day in your life. Because when you have encountered the restoration of God, it's double for your trouble. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Oh, let the sun shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace Your love today. We are changed. All right, now let's. Let's get a little bit more in this. Now. Things that need to need restoration are things that have over time been allowed to slip in a state of neglect or disrepair, the, the condition of needing repair. Things like maybe prayer life that needs repair. Because it's interesting around the country for some churches that were closed and some that are still closed. It's interesting around the country that uh, all people got to do is mash a button and they like, I ain't mashing no button. It's like, okay, so what have y'all been doing this whole time? <laughs> Prayer life needs to be restored. Your attitude towards other people need to be restored. Your, your finances might need to be restored. Your faith in some cases needs to be restored. Your physical body may need to be restored. Your peace, your courage, your confidence in God might need to be restored. Most people have come to understand restoration as, as the means to bringing back something or putting back something to, back into its original state. That's the world's definition of restoration. The world's rest, uh, definition is to, to bring back to the original state, but that's not God's definition of restoration. God is not going to restore you back to the original state. He always takes it better than what it was. Godly, re re godly restoration is bringing something into state where it would be even better than the original. Oh, I don't think y'all heard that. You're about to be better than you originally were. You're about to do better than what you originally were. <laughs> Everything about God's divine recovery is going to be about you being better. You might as well give yourself a new middle name, George Bitter Griffin. Because God's not going to restore it back to original state. It's, it's always going to be better. Look at Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, verses 10 and 12. Check this out, man. It, it's, it's something I want you to just so get a hold of tonight because I want you waking up tomorrow glad and rejoicing. Somebody said, what you glad for? You got time? I'm, all glad for, I'm, I'm glad for what he's done, what he's doing, and oh, what he's about to do. Job 42, verse 10, 
And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Underline that. That's interesting. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Somebody shout better. Yeah. And then in, in verse 12, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. More than his beginning. More than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep from 7,000. He had 6,000 camels from three. He had 1,000 yoke of oxen from five and 1,000 she asses. It was better. I said it was better. So when we talk about believing God that he will restore, it's better. He's going to jack it up some. And he's going to do it so you'll know he did it. Yeah, but Brother Doll, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I just feel like, you know, but, but what about me? No, no, no. God says, I, I, have seen, I have seen you walk in the cheaper rather than the deeper. And, and, and so step aside a little bit. I'm going to show you what I really think of you. You, you, you keep thinking little of yourself. You keep wondering, could it be me? Could I have this? Is it really God's will for me to walk in this kind of blessing? And God's like, I'm trying to take you to the better, but you're stuck in the average. But notice what he says here. This is important. Restoration begins with forgiveness. And Job turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. It begins with forgiveness. Unforgiveness and strife can hinder restoration because you're in the center of the circle and you've made it all about you. And God's trying to take you, oh my God, I heard that, Lord. God's trying to take you from your past, but some of you want to stay married to your past. And what some of you need to do is have a funeral for your past. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You're so connected to your past, God can't take you forward because you're so connected to your past. You know, that's what Paul was trying to tell us. He was like, listen, I hadn't attained everything, but there's one thing I do. I forget about the things that are behind me, and I'm reaching to those things that are before me. It's time to start reaching to those things that are before me. Always in the past. The past ministering to you emotionally. Always in the past. God's trying to show you how much he loves you, how much he's forgiven you, and you're still stuck. Oh, I still regret this. Oh, but if I'd have did this. Oh, but please, please hear me good. Your past is past, and there's nothing you can do about what's past. So get out of there. Oh, but if I'd have only did this. You didn't. So get out. Yeah, but every time I hear that word, it made me think about the past. Stop listening to that word. Get out. Somebody call you, hey, how you doing? Well, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I just wish I was a better mother. Wish I was a better father. You know what? Please stop comparing your parenting with the movies. Look at Ezek uh, Exodus chapter 22. I'm almost finished here. Exodus chapter 22. And verse 1, look at this. I want to decree this over you. Exodus 22 and verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox, one, or steal a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. This has always been God's heart. It ain't never going back to the original state. Just in case some of y'all looking forward to going back to exactly what you used to be, you ain't never going to be what you used to be. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? You ain't never going to be what you used to be. Somebody said, I used to be broke. You'll never be broke another day in your life. Somebody said, I used to be sick all the time. You'll never be sick like that another day in your life. 
Somebody said, I used to be mean. You'll never be mean like that, not another day in your life, because when you have encountered the restoration of God, it's double for your trouble. And even much more as we move into Scripture. Look at Joshua chapter 5 and 12. Joshua chapter 5 and 12. My God, my God. My God, my God. I better be careful. I feel like preaching up here in a minute. My God, my God. I got me a church here tonight. My God. I don't know where y'all came from, but I'm going to tell you, we, got, we can have some church up in here tonight. My, uh, I got to make sure I don't hurt myself. <laughs> Look at this. Joshua 5, 12. And, oh, and the manna ceased on, on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn, the old corn of the land. The manna ceased and they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But, uh-oh, they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. The bad corn was gone. The manna stopped, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan. Here's what I want you to hear. Get ready to eat the fruit of the promised land. What do I mean? Get ready to eat the fruit of God's promises. See, up until now, you know those promises. You've quoted those promises. You've meditated on those promises. But God's getting ready to do a thing where you're getting ready to eat the fruit of those promises. Praise the Lord. Go back and look at those promises. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You're getting ready to eat that fruit. I decree and declare that you're about to eat the fruit of God's promises. Amen. Who Jesus. Who Jesus. Who Jesus. Think about that thing. Well, I, I'm getting ready to eat the fruit of the promises. Not just to read the fruit of the promises. I'm getting ready to eat the fruit of the promises. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> You've been eating of dry corn for quite some time. You've been eating of average for quite some time, but you're getting ready to eat the fruit out of the promised land. <laughs> Hallelujah, you're getting ready to eat the healing out of the promised land. Hallelujah, you're getting ready to eat the promotion out of the promised land. You're getting ready to eat relationships out of the promised land. You're getting ready to eat prosperity out of the promised land. I don't know how you've been eating lately, but you're getting ready to eat out of the promise that God has already made for you. But you got to be glad. I said you got to be glad. Oh, I don't start with that hammer. My God, my God. Well, I'm a Baptist boy. Don't start. Don't start that hammer. Oh! Woo! My God. Mm-mm-mm. Let, let me do, let me do, let me do something just a little bit and then we'll, we'll talk about how God is still stirring in the nest of your life. We'll talk about when, when the devil thought he had you down, Jesus reached down in, in the middle of a pit and picked you up out of that pit, placed your feet on a solid ground, put a new song in your heart. And then we'll talk about how you started praising him. And we'll stop and talk about how you start giving him the glory. Oh, the glory. Mm. Oh, I got to have a little church in here. I, I. 
Watch this. See, you, you can eat and have a little church at the same time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You can eat and have a little church at the same time. Eat some collard greens, then taste a little apple pie. Eat some squash, eat a little lemon meringue. Because when that word gets on the inside of you and you begin to look and see how God has blessed you, you begin to look and see how far God has brought you. You begin to look and see how God paid your bills and you didn't know where the money was going to come from. You can't help but to give him praise. You can't help but to give him a shout. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get to Esther. I'm trying to get to Esther. I'm trying to get to Esther. I know some of you are wondering, what is, what, what happened to you, Dollar? What's going on? Well, first of all, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he saved me one day and he raised me out of a bed of affliction. When the doctor said I had cancer, God healed me of the cancer. When the doctor said I had meningitis, God healed me of the meningitis. When I was in that wreck over 21 years ago, and they thought I was dead. They didn't call the ambulance, but they went ahead and called the morgue. God delivered me out of that situation. So excuse me why I shout and give him praise. Excuse me why I rejoice and I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. My God. Jesus, my way maker. Jesus, my battle axe in the time of a battle. Jesus, my balm in Gilead. Jesus, my sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus, my rock in a weary land. Jesus, my supply house. You see, I don't know about you, but I got to praise God. I don't know about you, but I got to praise God. Oh, he's been mighty good to me. He's been mighty good to me. He's been mighty good to me. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what you know, but you don't know like I know how good God's been to me. And so you wonder, you wonder why I shout like this. You wonder why I'm screaming like this. You wonder why I'm praising God like this. Well, honey, if he's done for you what he has done for me, you might ought to start praising him right now yourself. You might ought to start shouting right now yourself. You might ought to start rejoicing right now yourself. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, yeah. Woo! My God. My God. My God, some of y'all think I done lost my mind. But to be honest with you, I have lost my mind. I now have the mind of Christ. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Do y'all do y'all know what a praise break is? I got, I got a couple more scriptures, but before we do it, I, I might get in trouble, but before we do it, I want to have a little.
praise break. A praise break. Andre Krause, Andre Krause used to say they call us holy rollers. And what they say is true. But if they knew what we were rolling about, they would be rolling too. <laughs> Esther, Esther 9, Esther 9, hallelujah. Now in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution. Look at this. In the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. The enemies that are about to come against you, they're in expectation of ruling over you. But God getting ready to turn this thing around. And instead of those enemies ruling over you, you'll be ruling over that situation. I decree that right now in the name of Jesus. On the contrary. Amen. I'm trying to build your hope up. I'm trying to build your hope up. I'm trying to get you stirred up a little bit. All that word you got, I'm trying to just pack a match under that thing, man. You need to get your fire back. Some of y'all lost your fire. You quote scripture, it made me sleepy when I listen to you. You don't even say it like you used to say it. But I believe there's a fire burning on the inside of it. I want to see how you, I, I want to see what you do when you're on your way home. I, I, I want to see what you do when you, when, 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 the, when the devil come knock on your door, how you going to respond. It's easy to do this when you're surrounded by all these word of faith people. But do you have a praise right in the middle of your situation? Learn about the spiritual recovery available through God with Creflo Dollar's three-message series, Divine Recovery from Spiritual Idolatry, preached at the 2021 Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Honor is the opposite of idolatry. When we honor God's Word and give it value that is greater than anyone else, then God will honor our words when we pray and give it value. I value you more than anything, God. You're number one. You're the Lord of my life. You're at top right now. I will not replace you. I will not bump you down. He's number one in my life. Things will change when you make sure that God is number one in your life. Things will change when you make sure that you are honoring God. Get your copy for a love gift of just 20 U.S. dollars or more plus shipping and handling. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Get on the road to recovery today. Grace Life Conference 2022 is almost here. July 14th, 15th, and 16th, we're going back to the classroom to learn how understanding grace empowers change. Join us live, online, or in person for three days of grace with Creflo and Taffy Dollar. Have faith in Jesus that he's taking care of your sins. When I don't believe Jesus was raised from the dead, well, you're still guilty in your sin. You're still in your shame because that faith is to be used for all that Jesus has done for us. Whatever you are in need of, God can cause breakthrough. He is the Lord of the breakthrough in your relationships today. It's always inspiring, empowering, and it just teaches us to live free. Live for the Lord and live in the freedom that He has given us. Don't wait, seating is limited. Text Grace Life to 51555 or visit gracelife-conference.org now to register today. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better 
because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I want to thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but he saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from Pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.